Hi guys, this is C.T. Johnson, the Funding Doctor, bringing you my uh, COVID-19 Financial Survival Guide. Um, today we're going to talk with Greg Turner of Trilogy Funds. You'll um, see that the quality of the video is not that great. We had significant uh, challenges in terms of technology. I think everybody's getting used to the idea of working from home and, and how do the various tools work. But anyway, so forgive that. Um, one of the things that's interesting that you might take note of is an emerging theme that I'm seeing in the market is that um, the uh, construction funding is actually pretty stable. There's a flight to quality, which Greg and I will talk about a little bit. Um, but other than that, it's pretty much business as usual. There are other things, residual stock and short term and land banking, which are more stressed. But construction funding is actually, at the moment, not too bad. So without further ado, here is Greg Turner from Trilogy Funds. So, all right. Um, so happy to have uh, Greg Turner from Trilogy Funds with us today. And uh, Greg, thanks for joining us. My pleasure. My pleasure. So give us a... Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, yeah, it's a bit of uncharted territory for all of us. Yeah. <laughs> especially this work from home thing. So, yeah, yeah, we'll work it out. We'll yeah, it. yeah, exactly. So give us about a 10-second overview of Trilogy. Who are you? What kind of deals do you fund? How much money do you have in the market right now? Stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Trilogy, we are a, I guess, we like to call ourselves one of Australia's largest non-bank private development financiers. Yep. So the business actually started about 20 years ago with our managing director, Phil Ryan. It's like a solicitor's mortgage fund. Yeah. And then I guess over that period, it's just grown and grown and grown um, to where we are today. So we've got about 50 staff. Uh, we have 85 loans in the book uh, to a tune of about $490 million. Um, And then aside from that, we've also got some other investments that the fund manages. So we've got a what we call like an enhanced cash fund. Mm -hmm. um, so that's got a return of just under 4% at the moment. And then we've also got some industrial property trusts. Okay. Sort of ma so it manages syndicates on behalf of investors. So, so, you, so you guys have, that's quite a range of, uh, of activity mm. that you guys have got going on. Yeah, that's right. But I would say the mortgage fund is by and large the flagship for our business. Yeah. It is the main focus. Yep. And what do you think, you know, sets you guys apart or makes you guys different? What do you think your advantage in the market is? Or what do you think you do better than other guys? Mm -hmm. So I really think uh, probably our reputation, having been around for that lengthy period of time. Yep. Uh, sort of it, it internally for us it creates i guess good systems and practices so we've got our own proprietary software we've got a huge back of house and i think that creates a lot of confidence for people in terms of you know for developers being able to pay their claims be able to get res reasonably quick approvals and that sort of thing mm -hmm. um, and just reputation in the marketplace i mean what we see um, is like a lot of fast money that's come into the market probably yep. in the last couple of years and it's quite interesting that we've seen like that money retreat yeah. just as quickly over the last month, yeah. which is fascinating in itself. But we're still here um, and we've still got, got the money and we've still got the appetite. So well, I think. And, and that kind of leads me to a question, which is, yeah. you know, given the upheaval around COVID-19, like what's mm -hmm. Trilogy's stance on lending? Are you guys still open for business or have you pulled back a little bit or you're more conservative? I mean, how has it impacted mm -hmm. you? Yeah, so we're, we're very much definitely open for business. We've still got strong liquidity into the fund, which is important as well. Uh, so I guess really the message that's been honed into us over this week particularly is a flight to quality. Yeah. So I guess, and, and look, you're probably hearing this from just about everyone out there as well, but we probably only want to be focusing on the better deals in the marketplace. Yep. And I guess the reason is... Oh, it's obviously less risky, but, um, you know, and the better deals are from well-capitalized, uh, experienced developers, deals with strong returns, um, and probably in some of the better locations as well. Yep. Having said that, no, everything is still by, on a case-by-case. Case. Um, yep. So we, we would still look at every deal on its merits. Um, we're not necessarily... Uh, changing our LVRs all that much, although there's probably more of an emphasis that, because traditionally we would go 65% inclusive of GST. Yep. Now we might, might want to par that back just a little bit to maybe 60 inclusive of G GST, or we would take the GST off and go 65% exclusive of GST for new deals anyway. Yeah. Existing deals in the pipeline, no, they're absolutely fine and I'll stay sort of as they are. Right. 
Um, and then I guess that that actually kind of leads to uh, a bit of a, a thing that I had seen, and it'd be interesting to get your your view on it. Is um, the valuers <clears throat> have really gotten spooked, right, mm. by COVID nineteen, and and so they have just mm. on a, almost a day by day basis, they are sort of reducing their their the values that they put on properties, yeah. right, um, and <clears throat> I, I would say. You know, in, in my view, valuers haven't exactly been known for being brave about uh, the values that they're brave putting on bullish. stuff. Yeah, yeah they, they, I mean, even when things are really, really going well, they, they tend mm-hmm. to be pretty conservative. So yeah. ha- have you seen that impacting or, or rather, you know, the combination of if you guys are reducing just a little bit, maybe your LVR, mm-hmm. as you, you said, you know, plus the fact that that uh, property prices, what, you know, two months ago or three months ago would have come in as a $5 million valuation is now coming in as a three and a half million or $4 million, you know, uh, have you seen sort of that impacting the the way that you guys are doing deals or, or not? Not, not so much just yet, but it's interesting because, you know, having received a valve, you know, on a certain deal three weeks ago, you have maybe, do you look at that in a totally different light now? Right. And consider, you know, how does that, how does that look in the current market? Sure. Um, how, I'm not saying our existing vowels that we have would not be still alive as they are, but the new vowels, yeah, I mean, I haven't seen any projects sort of slashed and burnt as of yet. I have been heard, hearing a lot of rumours that valuers are taking sort of 30% off projects just because, I mean, the pure reason they don't know what the market's going to look like. Yeah on completion of the project. Yeah. So obviously, as we said, they're just taking the most conservative view uh, and they're doing that. I've also seen a lot of disclaimers, like pages and pages and pages within valuations and disclaimers. And it's to the point as a lender where like, you know, come on, valuer, what's even the point of getting a valuation <laughs> if you're saying well, we can't even rely on it because of your disclaimers? Yeah. So there's a, there's a bit of stuff to sort of navigate in that respect. And look, it's uncharted territory for all of us. Sure. So we just we just got to work it out. Yeah, more or less. Mm. No, that's true. That's true. Are there any kind of absolute no go type of deals for you guys? Uh, you know, in terms of stuff you just mm. won't do, or and especially yeah. anything that might have changed since the the pandemic stuff took over. Yeah, I wouldn't say there's a no go. We still have appetite for everything across the board. Uh, what what I would say we have less appetite for. So call it a month ago, we were pretty aggressively pursuing residual stock. Yeah. Uh, because we just had a wash of liquidity and we just had to get the money out more than ever. Yep. Uh, but however, having said that, you know, the benefit back then of residual stock was you could get a large chunk of money out the door. It's low risk because it's completed and you can derive income through yep. rental yep. If, you, if need be. Um, whereas now, we're much more conscious of the fact that, you know, we do have investors wanting to redeem their money yep. um, and we just got to be careful and mindful around the liquidity situation yeah, and not parking aside for a loan this huge chunk of money um, whereas on construction loans it's much oh, I don't know if you'd say easier but it's much more dynamic in the way that you can work out your cash flows because sure. you've got you know pl- paying claims here paying redemptions and then you've got we're still getting money coming in the door yeah so that's still happening so I guess it's it's not a not so much an avalanche on either side sure Understood. but we will still again for great developers, great deal, um, you know, sensible LVR, we'll, we'll still look at it. And so what kind of advice would you give to developers who are seeking funds from Trilogy? Like as a guy who, you know, talks mm. to you about deals quite a bit, what, what makes it easy for you to say yes to a deal that I bring to you? Yeah, okay. I think um, it probably just comes back to the fundamentals of development and development finance um, and making sure those fundamental principles that we all know are, actually being put into practice. So probably the first one that comes to mind is having actual cash and equity into the deal up front. Yeah. And I, I like to say to people, I mean, I don't want to be charging you interest from day one. I want you to put your money in first. Yeah. Uh, so that it's there and then we can we can tighten up our loan term as much as possible and then have a buffer at the back end should something go wrong. So yeah. if you do have the cash to put into a deal, put it in up front. Yeah. Uh, I think that really helps. If you've got a couple of pre-sales, obviously great. We don't necessarily need pre-sales. And uh, I suspect they might be a little bit harder to get. Yeah. 
um, at this point in time. But I really think um, having a bit more cash, if developers can, into a transaction will definitely help us. It'll lower the LVR a little bit, and it, I think it reduces the risk for everybody. So we're not over leveraged at yeah. this point in time. Yeah. It's interesting um, because that's that is I would say the the thing that I've probably become strongest about in terms of my feedback to, to my clients is um, pe people who are seeking high LVRs. I, I just I just have started telling them, look, you know, I, I can't do it, and I don't know anybody who can do it, right? Yeah. So uh, you know, <laughs> whether yeah. that's my yeah. uh, you know lack of of uh, ability. To, to you know get you to the right people or if that's the market I, I mean I'm prepared to live with whatever criticism comes out of that but I just can't like I anymore previously no, no. there might have been some entertaining those ideas if it was a strong enough project but now I just say you know the lenders aren't doing it they, 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 they need upfront cash to see that this is a deal worth doing so absolutely yeah. and it comes back to the reality of doing projects and what I always say is you can't be in the development business if you don't have money and if you don't have cash yeah that's right it's just that's just it's a very capital intensive business yeah you've got to be expected to put a little bit in and look trilogy we we accept valuation uplift as well yep on say land and we treat that as equity yeah uh, but there comes a point where either at the front end or the back end you're going to need a bit of cash yeah to get to get you over the line so yep. i think that's just more important than ever yeah Fantastic. Is there anything else that you'd like to add? Anything you'd like to tell us about Trilogy or any other things we haven't covered? Um, probably, yeah, not so much. I would probably actually, at this point in time, it's what is most interesting is to get everyone's view on the market, what they're all seeing. So I've been chatting to quite a few brokers over the last week or two. And I mean, the feedback seems to be that um, a lot of funders are pulling their offers, which I think is a bit sort of uncommercial a bit unconscionable to a degree right depending on how far advanced they are so i just wonder you as a broker ct because you're you guys are really like a distribution and a funnel and like a bit of a web that catches everything yeah what are you seeing by way of i guess are people being torched out there with their existing offers and their existing funders i would say that i sort of uh, i see it a little bit like um i see it like the tide is sort of how I, I think about it, right? Which is the deals that are furthest up the beach, meaning they have the, you know, they're the most, they're the riskiest deals and the hardest to get done. Mm -hmm. And therefore the people who are, are funding them also tend to be the people who are most interested in risk premiums. Um, yep. But at the same time, they also have the greatest exposure to, you know, risks in the market. You know, mm -hmm. the tide is pulled back, right? away from those so that's what I see is that deals that are that are more marginal they are yeah. having more problems deals that are solid um, m meaning it's a you know it's a experienced developer it's a good area you know it's proven sort of sales either through uh, pre-sales or it's a very active market you know there's they've got skin in the game you know all of the things that you've talked about those deals seem to be going forward pretty much untouched, right? Yeah. I mean, the only yeah. thing I see is a little bit more due diligence on people. Um, I, I, I do have a number of uh, lenders who have basically just said they've pulled back, but they do tend to be uh, either more on that sort of higher on the risk reward profile, uh, yeah. or they are newer into the market, yeah. um, and therefore they just don't have the experience. So those are the sort of the things that I see. So the, the thing that I've told everybody, you know, on these sort of uh, broadcasts that I put out there is um, <clears throat> the short term market is the one that is just really, really difficult at the moment. Mm. So, you, you know, you've literally got, uh, you, you know, you only had about five or, or maybe seven kind of players in that space mm. to start yeah. with. And, uh, you know, w one of them has a, not just pulled back, but apparently has capital difficulties, you know, yep. two, two or three of the others have, you know, w one of them has pulled back pretty hard. The other, you know, two or three of the others are pulled back moderately. And only one of them is sort of reporting that they're doing business as usual. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm not sure because I haven't put yeah. a deal through with them yet. 
So yeah. it, it is kind of a, a kind of a mixed bag, but that's what I'm seeing is that basically yeah, yeah. The, the riskier the deal, the harder it is, harder it is to get it through. A little bit reflecting the point that you made earlier about a flight to quality. Mm. No, no, that, no, that makes total sense. Actually, you reminded me of a pretty key probably distinction that not a, not a lot of people would understand about how potentially like different mortgage funds work. So really, there's probably two major types. There's a pool mortgage fund. Yep. Um, and then there's oh, what was it? I'm having a mind blank. The other one, help me out. Contributory. Uh, contributory. That's the one. Don't know why I forgot that. So Trilogy is a pool mortgage fund. So I guess what that means is we have all the money sitting there. Yeah. Um, which I guess we, we like to think that that gives people a lot of confidence. Yeah. Um, that if we commit to a deal, we've only done so because we've got the money there. Yeah. And we've got the money set aside. Uh, with a view to you know paying the drawdowns that we, that we can see that we've got in you know yeah. over the immediate future. So I guess yeah, I, one thing I don't have a great understanding of is how the contributory funds at the moment are managing their investors. I suppose having probably committed to a, a whole basket of deals, but then still having to raise capital as they go to um, to keep those things moving. Most of them, what I see going on is that they, they, they manage it in one of two ways, either. The offer that they make you is they say, you know, th there's basically fine print that says yeah. if this deal doesn't sell down, then you don't get the money. That's kind of one one way that I see it. The other way that yeah. I see it is um, sort of the bigger contributory funds. What they do is they have kind of their own buffer fund. So let's yeah. say that they've got 20 million bucks. They've got, say, nominally $100 million of contributory money, but they've got 20 and so when they, you know, make a commitment to fund 10, then 10 of their slush fund, if you want to call it that, there, yeah, yeah, it yeah. is committed. And then they sell it down and they replenish from the sell down. So those mm. are sort of the two ways that I see it being managed right now. I will yeah. say, I don't actually see, I don't really see a difference in the contributory funds versus the committed, the mortgage funds at the moment, because mm. the people who are making contributions into contributory funds, they it follows the same kind of risk profile we were talking about before. The people who yep. are doing contribu tr contributions to short-term funds, which are highly risky, they have pulled mm. back. But the ones who are doing yeah, it to quality deals, they, they tend to be pretty, uh, they're taking a longer-term view of it. And mm. in fact, a lot of them are saying, you know, the, the money has to go somewhere and given the amount of stimulus that's coming into the market from various governments, you're probably looking at it has to be inflationary at some point and therefore, yep. you know, to have your money in a hard asset is better than having it in just sitting there. So, yeah. so there's a little bit of that going on. They're more sophisticated in, in terms of, you know, th their understanding of the market. Yeah, yeah, okay, no, that's interesting feedback as well. Uh, but I do think, I think everyone, probably agrees and in 12 months time or so this is just going to this whole thing that we're in now is going to create further pressure on prices and supply yeah i i think that's true the the economist I, had, had an interesting observation a few weeks ago it said you know it's unusual in a crisis that people don't know what's going to happen or the markets don't know what's going to happen in the next few weeks but they feel very secure about what's going to happen 12 months from now and that's very 100%. much the way people are looking at it and in a sense, in the construction funding business, which we are in, that's the nature of it anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, if you're in the midst of construction, there might be a bit of disruption with your crews on site um, having to shut down for a period of time. Uh, but I have a good degree of confidence that by the end of it, the sales will be there and the demand will be there as well for the finished product. Yeah. Because I guess people still need to live somewhere. Exactly. That's right. That's exactly mm. right. All right, Greg, I'm going to uh, draw this to a close. Thank you so much for uh, this. I really appreciate it. And, um, yeah, we will be talking to you more as this thing unfolds and develops. Yeah, very good. Uh, yeah, we shall see how it all pans out. But all the best all to right. everybody out there. Thanks, CT. Appreciate Thanks, Greg. It. You take care. Cheers. Bye. Bye.